Hello, welcome back to uh, part three of my response to Voyage Islam. Okay, in those uh, in those verses, uh, what what is happening is the children of Israel have forsaken their have forsaken God and have worshipped other idols, and now their enemies are upon them and they're pressing in to come and destroy them. And so God is saying, because you have forsaken me, I'm not going to protect you in battle. You're going to run out of food. You're going to be surrounded in your walls, and you're going to be you're going to resort to eating your own excrements to stay alive it's not teaching everybody to go out and do that so yes i believe that that happened and that was an event in history but it's not god's teaching for everybody to go out and do that however your prophet said that um the camel urine will heal you and that's a teaching for muslims to follow if they want healing in that area do you drink camel urine? If not, why? And why was your prophet a liar? Moreover, there's somebody who drank the urine of Muhammad, and he said, may Allah bless your stomach. So if this is a problem for you, why is it not when your prophet teaches that? But this isn't God teaching to go and do that. He's saying that they will do it in the context of it being a disgrace for those people. Moreover, with the dung on your faces verse that you brought up, um, that is for people who were uh, rebelling against the Lord and their priests who were chasing after different gods and just rejecting truth for falsehood. And so that will be a humiliation that they would receive. That's the verse in Malachi you brought up. It's not saying to go and smear poo-poo on your face. You can see how distasteful the Bible is just by reading Ezekiel 4.12. Well, the verse in Ezekiel, it, what happens is, the, again, the context in that is the people had been so rebellious that he told Ezekiel to cook his food on human waste to cook his food on it so that the smell would go out into the city and it would convict people. It would draw them near to the prophet and show them how bad things are and how terrible things were going. It's not saying to go and do that. And this is not a command for everybody. Like how in the Quran, in 65 verse 4, it is a command for all Muslims how they can divorce a little girl who hasn't had her period yet. Or how to divorce, how to beat your wife, as 34 verse 4 says. Or how to fight and kill those who don't believe in Allah and humiliate them, as 929 says. That was my issue. You failed to address any of these points. I'm not even going to go into that. Let's go to Jeremiah 8.8. 8, and we're going to address another off-topic subject that James brought up. He said that Allah sent 124,000 prophets. Stop. Show me that in the Quran. Where do you get this 124,000? Well, this is what Muslims tell me. So if this is a lie, it's not my fault. Your Muslim brothers have lied to me about that. But let's go with you then. We'll only say that it was the um, biblical prophets, the ones you believe in, Abraham, Noah, um, Jesus, uh, which is not the real Jesus. We'll go, we'll go Abraham, uh, Lot, who isn't a prophet for us, Musa, Issa, all of these people that screwed, that people screwed your God Allah over by corrupting their books. That was the point of what I was saying. Please address it. Where do you get that number from? You just made it up out of your head. Show it to me. But you said none of these 124,000 prophets could keep the Bible intact. But if you go to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8, it says, How can you say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? But behold, the false pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. Okay, let's open up Jeremiah 8 and see what it says. Here we go. Starting at verse 4. 
Moreover, you say to them, thus says the Lord. So this is what people, this is what the Lord is commanding Jeremiah to say to them. Will they fall and not arise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back? Jerusalem is a perpetual black backsliding. They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I listened and heard, but they do not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turn it, turned to his own course as the horse rushes into the battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows her appointed times, and the turtle dove, the swift, and the swallow observe the times of the coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. How can you say, We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So this isn't saying that the word of the Lord has been changed, but it's saying that their understanding of it, their scribes, them writing down what the law says, has been false. And this is why Jesus rebuked the scribes and the Pharisees. But he never said that the scripture was corrupted. It's their understanding of it that was corrupted. pen of the scribes has made the Bible into a lie according to your own Bible. No, you added that in. It doesn't say the false false pen of the scribes has turned the Bible into a lie. Read the verse carefully. It does not say that at all. It's their understanding that made it into a lie because they understood it up to how they wanted to, much like what you're doing with the Bible where I've exposed you on every corner. And where are my answers? You're trying. I gave you, you asked. You gave a challenge to Christians about the age of Aisha. I answered you on that, and your answer back to me is bringing up things in the Bible that you yourself f failed to understand, and that you go to. Obviously, this is from answering Christianity, the kid that we beat the hell out of in a debate, and trying to get his reasoning on. And every one of these can be answered very easily. So your Bible agrees with Islam. You don't know your own book. And this is the problem with the Christians. So all praises due to Allah. You just claim that I don't know my own book when you didn't hear me even talk about this when I've answered you. So how would you know in the first place? Secondly, when I brought up rocks stealing the clothing of Moses and what your prophet told, you said, you know what? I don't, I don't know I would believe that story, but if it's in the Quran, then I believe it. Meaning you don't know your own book, whether it's in there or not. Meaning, also, I can th give you the stupidest story anybody could possibly believe, and if suddenly I say it's in the Quran, well, then I guess you got to believe it. What if I tell you about, I saw this guy, he told me he has a flying carpet, and there was this bird that came to him, and this bird, she was a prophet, and her job uh, was ordained by God to go around and look for women with no hair on her legs. <laughs> prophet prophet what is it hoot hoot you stupid bird get away no no i i found a girl she has no hair on her legs very beautiful all right i'll take my flying carpet and we'll go see her and then you know what happened the prophet lied to her she <laughs> lied to him she had hair on her legs but this story's in your quran at first it probably sounded stupid until I told you it was in the Quran, and then suddenly, suddenly, it's it's a good story for you? Ah, uh, mashallah. Stay tuned for part four.